Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah ar-Rahman here and today, you know, with some examples. The final examples, you know, simpler ones yet important one. On the, the, the Laplace transform. Fine. So we see three or four or let's say five. I make them five in this video and this would be the very last video on examples. So I believe the spelling is right. So the first signal that I take is x of t is exponential of negative a and then the absolute of t. Fine. And my corresponding uh, x of s that is the Fourier transform is unknown. So uh, in the beginning I told you that maybe we have solved this example, maybe not anyways. So this you know very well, we can now split it on the values or depending on the value of t to be positive or negative, we can split it to a left side exponential, right side exponential. So what can I write is I can write that my x of t is equal to exponential of negative a t u of t, right? This is for t equal to positive plus it is equal to exponential of positive a t u of minus t and this is for negative values of time and you know very well the 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 the, the phenomena of the absolute it is uh, minus of what is absolute uh, what is inside the thing let's say t so minus of t for negative t uh, and, and and plus of t for uh, positive t fine so this is what we have so uh, let's say you know i name uh, these two so we do them uh, separately let's say I name this as an x1 of t I name this as an x2 of t have a look do we not know about the x1 of t we know this very well so do we not know about the x1 of s we know very well we know about x1 of s very well that uh, uh, you know exponential of negative a t u t corresponds to 1 over s plus a with the region of convergence is that real of s is greater than minus of a is it it like this it is we've seen this many times the only thing that remains is the second the second so let's say we consider the second so x2 of t is equal to exponential of a t a u of minus t so this implies what that my x2 of s would be the integration I, and this is negative t so the integration would be from negative infinity to zero exponential of a t and then uh, it's one in this limit c of minus t so we have directly exponential of negative s t integrated with respect to t is that fine till here so i've written it down uh, so for myself to you know save me some time anyways so uh, now what can i do is let's say leave the region of convergence for now we we do what we have it like this a negative infinity to zero exponential of a minus s into t and this is integrated with respect to t so what would you have exponential of uh, uh, a minus s you know when it's integrated a minus s into t and divide by a minus s and the limits are what the limits are uh, zero and negative infinity so when you put the limit zero when you put the limit zero so you have an exponential of zero which is equal to one right and then when you put exponential of uh, negative infinity so by assuming a minus s to be positive by assuming a minus s to be positive what do we have we have exponential of negative infinity which would turn down to be zero so i would have a one minus zero upon a minus s so one upon a minus s is my corresponding uh, 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 yes or i could say what if i take a negative common if i take a negative common so i have something to do with this if i have a one over here i take a negative common from here so can i not say this is an s minus a it is right so i write the this upward so finally my x2 of s comes out to be what it comes out to be a negative one upon s minus a isn't it fine 
it is. For the ROC, what do we do for the ROC now? So we know that we consider this equation right from here. So from here when you consider, so what do I have for ROC if I write? So we write it like this, negative infinity to zero, exponential of 80 and then in place of S I put a, a sigma T into exponential of minus J omega T with respect to t and you know the region of convergence depend on the real part of s which means the sigma so the real part uh, over here would be a minus sigma we, by taking uh, you know a minus sigma we can combine them right so i can write the integration exponential of a minus sigma into t and this is exponential of neo j omega t into t and the integration limits are negative infinity zero. So the real part is a minus sigma. Now have a look, have a look. To converge what would be the cases? If I have this a minus sigma, so this uh, if you know, uh, are, are, are depending on the value of what? Yes, depending on the value of a minus sigma, right? So a minus sigma could either be positive or it could be negative so if a minus sigma is positive first let's say let's say it's positive so you put the limit 0 that goes to 0 exponential 0 1 nothing happens if it's positive you put the exponential of negative uh, you put negative infinity in the limit so you have an exponential of negative infinity which means a decaying exponential when a minus sigma is positive so decaying and and which means what that this would converge if this is decaying right now if you have this to be negative in itself exponential of negative this bracket term is negative so we put zero that's nothing if you put a negative infinity in place of t so negative negative would become positive and which means this would become a growing exponential and a growing exponential will not converge so which means what that for our roc the desired case is what the desired case is that this a this is not an alpha okay that this a minus sigma should be greater than zero which means a should be greater than sigma or which means sigma should be less than a you could say that a should be greater than sigma or you could say that sigma should be less than a All right which is the real part of s of course so now have a look what would be the overall the overall uh, uh, what the overall Laplace transform so the overall Laplace transform x of s, this would be x1 of s plus x2 of s. And let me put the values. So this would be 1 over s plus a, a minus 1 over s minus a. So this would come out to be an s minus a minus s minus a. And this will be an s squared minus a squared in a plus b into a minus b, right? So this s and this s was cancelled, you have a negative 2a. x of s comes out to be a negative 2a upon s squared minus a squared. Isn't it like this? It is. It is. And the region of convergence. The region of convergence, of course. So the overall region of convergence would now be what? So for one, for x1 of s, if this is my sigma x's, this is my j omega x's. So for x1 of s, what do you have? You have real of s to be greater than minus of a. So which means it would lie to the right side. And for the other, you have sigma to be less than that of an a. So which means it should lie to the left side. So have a look. What would be the overall? What would be the overall region of convergence? So of course the overall region of convergence would be the intersection of both. So for this it would be the right sided one. And for this it would be the left sided one. So this would be the overall region of convergence and this example that we did is of course when the value of a is positive when the value of a is negative the Laplace transform does not exist fine so anyways you could also have seen it from you also uh, you know could ex inspect it from the properties or expect it from the properties that it was a double sided signal so you know the 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 the, the ROC would be uh, you know in between like in between the N, uh, two poles and that is what it is. So that was example number one. Example number two is let's say cause of 
omega naught t. So I write it over here. X of t is cos of omega naught t with a u of t as well. And of course, you know, the, the Laplace transform x of s is unknown. Fine. So what do you do? What do you do? So for the simplicity, we can use the Euler's relation, you know, right? So I could write my x of t as what? As a 1 over 2 times exponential of a j omega naught t plus an exponential of minus j omega naught t, right? So this is for the cos omega naught t and then you have, of course, the u of t as well. Now what do you do? Let's say I, you know, uh, give it to both of them. I multiply this thing inside. So this implies that my x of t is a 1 over 2 exponential of j omega naught t into u of t. And then a plus 1 over 2 exponential of negative j omega naught t u of t. So have a look. I've got it in some terms that exponential of negative a t into u of t. Why? I need to get it into some standard form. I need to get it into some standard form. And what is that standard form? That exponential of negative a t u of t, right? This is the right side signal u of t. So this has the corresponding Laplace transform equal to what? 1 upon s plus a with the region of convergence sigma greater than minus a. So, so have a look. Can I not write my x of t as this? Uh, that x of t is equal to what is equal to 1 over 2 exponential of and I write this as a minus of minus j omega naught into t right and then what do you have then you have a plus 1 over 2 exponential of so I take the minus outside minus of j omega naught into t and of course u of t is with both the signals. So have a look now I have got my a for both the cases so which means that I've got my x of s. So my x of s would be what 1 over 2 is a constant I take it outside for both and then I have a 1 over s plus a s plus and my a over here is a negative j omega naught and then of course for here I have a 1 over s plus a so I have 1 over j s plus j omega naught so if you want to you know simplify it further so you can do it of course you can do it so you have a 1 over 2 into s plus j omega into s minus j omega so you were here you will have s plus j omega naught plus s minus j omega naught so j omega naught goes with j omega naught you have an s squared uh, a squared minus j omega naught squared so you have 1 over 2 into 2s divided by s squared and then you have minus omega naught squared and j squared would be 1 so you have a plus omega naught squared so s cancels out with s and uh, uh, no no sorry 2 cancels out with 2 s we have so which means that we have got our x of s to be s upon s squared plus omega naught squared. Have a look. This is my final answer. It's hot here. It's hot here. Anyways, I, I, I thought if the, the weather was good today, it's, it's quite good outside. But inside, no. And I cannot turn on the fan because then you would be complaining of the background noise. So anyways, I'm recording a video on the 6th of July without a fan. Anyways, anyways. So for the ROC, for the ROC, what do we have? We, we consider the equation what this we have in terms of exponential of j omega naught t, either positive or negative. Let's say I, I write over here that for ROC, what do I have? We have this equation, you know, 0 to infinity exponential of j omega naught t into exponential of negative st. Right. So what can I do is 0 to infinity. I have to check for the real parts. So exponential of j omega naught t into exponential of negative sigma t into an exponential of uh, uh, negative j omega t. Have a look. Do we have any other real part except for the sigma? Do we have any other real part for the 
uh, except for the sigma so we check it on the basis of sigma so this sigma could either be positive or it could be negative if it is positive in itself so the this thing would be negative right and then when you put infinity so this would be fine exponential of negative infinity would convert to zero so which means this would be decaying and this would converge right whereas if this is negative in itself so then negative negative would become positive when you put a positive infinity so it would diverge exponential of positive infinity to infinity so this means this would be uh, you know a growing exponential and this will not converge so which means what that we only need the positive values of sigma and that is the only thing so the roc associated with this is that their sigma is greater than zero so if i draw them the roc of course you can draw this is your sigma axis this is your j omega axis so this is what the ro C is and of course from here also you can see that you have two poles you can say in a sense that you have two poles that are lying at s is equal to zero so the roc comes out to be the entire right half plane is that fine so for the third let's say uh, i remove the board first okay so i removed half of it because the next signal i am taking is sine of omega naught t so it's again related to that so the third signal is x of t is sine of omega naught t into u of t and of course x of s is unknown so for this case now what do we do you know again that we could write my sine of omega naught t as a 1 over 2 j into an exponential of j omega naught t and over here now you have a minus exponential of negative j omega naught t and u of t we have from the question fine so again we split them we try to make them into the the standard forms so what do we have i have a 1 over 2 j exponential of j omega naught t and then u of t and then minus 1 over 2 j this 1 over 2 j would be of course it is a constant as over there exponential of minus j omega naught t and u of t fine so now what can i do again this is a right sided signal so again i need to convert it into that form so what do i do i write a 1 over 2 j exponential of exponential of what a minus minus j omega naught t into u of t and then uh oh, wait this t is outside <clears throat> this t is outside minus 1 over 2j exponential of uh, and i and i write it in brackets so minus of j omega naught into t and then u of t have a look i have got it in my standard form right i have got it in my that standard form the right side so this implies what that my x of s the laplace transform would be what 1 over 2j i would take constant right and then uh, what would i have what would i have so for this i would have 1 over s plus a s plus minus of j omega naught is a right and then a minus so and 1 over s plus j omega naught over here so of course you can simplify it for yourself again uh, you know uh, an s plus j omega naught minus s plus j omega naught and this would be an s squared a minus j omega naught squared this would come out to be 1 over 2j s would cancel out with s we have a 2j omega naught and divided by s squared plus omega naught squared so 2 cancels out with 2 j cancels out with j we are only left with our x of s that is equal to omega naught upon s squared plus omega naught squared this is my my what my laplace transform and uh, the ROC so the ROC you have again the same thing you have again the same thing uh, 
that you take the integration you know again you have a positive or negative this is exponential of j omega naught t the only real term the only real term that would be the case is only this sigma this sigma is the only real term in the integration so again based on the value of sigma to be positive or negative we have the decaying and the growing exponentials and for this to 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 convert the integration what do we have we have the sigma to be positive so again the roc for this is also that sigma is positive it's greater than zero sigma this is my j omega and this is the roc fine yes sir okay so uh, moving into the next example first i remove the board okay let's say we see differential equations let's say we see a differential equation also so this is example number four for the day what do i have the second derivative of y of t plus five times the first derivative of y of t plus four times y of t is equal to x of t the system is initially relaxed so we are given the system is initially relaxed which means initial condition is equal to zero which means we will be using the bilateral Laplace transform formulas in case of the derivative and then excited by the input x of t is 10 times u of t then you have what then you have the inputs x of t is 10 times u of t so find the output y of t this is what the question is so you know very well you know very well what you do you take the Laplace transform right so the second derivative this implies s squared times y of s plus 5 times first derivative which means 5 times y of s plus 4 no 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 5 times s times y of s y of the first derivative and then 4 directly y of t so 4 times y of s and this x of t so in place of x of t i can write x of s x of s right now what do i have taking y of s common so if i take y of s common so i would have uh, wait y of s so i would have an s squared plus 5s plus 4 and this would be equal to 10 upon s for the value of x of s so which means now what do i have which means why i have y of s is equal to 10 divided by s into s plus 4 into s plus 1 so i just split it into its factors form so we could do uh, it through the uh, simplified to the partial partial fraction expansion how do i do it so we do it by a upon s plus b upon s plus 4 plus c upon s plus 1 or anyway so you i will not solve them i will not solve them you know the partial fraction expansion better than me so you solve it by your own self and I, of course i am writing down the values i am writing down the values so this implies what that y of s comes out to be a 10 by 4 is the value of a divided by s minus 10 by 3 that is divided by s plus 1 and then minus plus a 10 by 12 that is divided by s plus 4 so this are these are the values now what we were asked so we were asked the y of t so for y of t what do we have to do we have to take the the inverse so so if i take the inverse so what do i have if i have y of t by taking the inverse so this would be equal to 10 by 4 is the constant of course and then for s what do you have for s you have uh, 1 over s is the laplace transform for unit step signal so you just keep in it in, it in your mind right and then you have a minus 10 over 3 and s plus 1 you have it so this is for exponential of negative a t u of t whereas 
uh, one is the thing one is a so you have a negative t into u of t right and then plus you have a 10 upon 12 and then you have exponential of negative 40 and you have u of t so let's say we take the u of t common and i have taken it common now how did i uh, take su uh, suggest that it was a right sided signal because over here i got also used the left side signal so i took it from the x of t is 10 times u of t the input was right sided so i assumed i considered the output to be right sided as well fine now this 10 by 4 this 10 by 4 that does not have an exponential term this is your steady state response this is your steady state response which does not depend on the on the uh, initial values it depends on what no sorry which is the final response right which is the final response which would stay which would stay right and these two these two are the the transient responses and what is a transient response that that has an overshoot that oscillates and then dies out when you approach the time to infinity so it means this would die out and the only thing that remains is your steady state response that is 10 by 4 in this case is that clear it is example number five example number five the second derivative of y of t plus 7 times the first derivative plus 10 times y of t is 3 times x of t where x of t is u of t and initial conditions are given And what are the initial conditions? That y of 0 minus is 1 and y derivative of 0 minus is 2. Fine. So if you are given initial conditions, so which formula do you have to use in that case? You have to use the derivative formula of the unilateral Laplace transform. Is that fine? It is. Okay. So let's say we do it. So for the second derivative, for the second derivative, what do we have? We have an s squared y of s minus s times y of 0 minus and then minus y derivative of 0 minus. Yes, yes. And then for the first derivative, so you have a plus 7. For the first derivative, you have an s times y of s minus y of 0 minus. Yes, again, yes. And then plus 10 times y of s and this is equal to 3 times x of s isn't it fine till here it is let's say i take the y of s common so you do it you just a little expand it for yourself and i am skipping one step so i have y of s into s squared plus 7s plus 10 s squared plus 7s plus 10 and then you have a minus s times y of 0 minus. Then you have minus y derivative of 0 minus. And then you have minus 7 times y of 0 minus. And then you have 3 times x of s on the right side. So put values of the things that are given. And what is this also? So the mic, the, 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 the cable was stuck. Anyways. So we have values for this as 1, for this as 2, for this as 1. So put the values, right? And take them to the other side as well. So this implies what? That you have y of s is equal to. So 3 times x of s was, or, 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 or wait, y of s multiplied by s squared plus 7s plus 10. And this is equal to 3 times x of s. And then you have a plus s for this thing, right? plus s and then plus uh, plus 2 for this thing when it goes to that side and then a plus 7 again so which means that I could write it as a 3 times x of s plus s plus 9 isn't that clear it is so finally I could write my y of s as what as a 3 times x of s 
divided by s squared plus 7s plus 10 and plus s plus 9 divided by s squared plus 7s plus 10. Fine, why did I wrote it separately? Why did I wrote it separately? I have a reason for that. I have a reason for that. To tell you the, about the forced response and the natural response. So this one that involves the x of s, this is my force response. This is my force response and this is due to what? Due to the applied input. And over there we named it something else, I, I told you, zero state response and zero input response, I told you. So I believe this is due to the zero state response or what? So you check it in the previous video, I'm confusing it, which one is which one. So this one is the natural response and the natural response is what? It's not due to the applied input, it's due to the initial conditions. Is that okay? It is. So now again we are asked about the y of t so I would not be doing the the partial expansion partial fracture expansion so you could do it by yourself so I would say that my y of s would come out to be like this a upon s right plus b upon s plus 2 plus c upon s plus 5 for this one right I, I have written this as an s into s plus 2 into s plus 5 wait I, I missed a step I missed a step please wait not like this I would do it as what I would say that my y of s would come out to be so 3 and this is divided by x of s values I'm putting so I put it on over s right and then you have an s uh, squared plus uh, so I would write a plus 5 s plus 2 s or what yes so plus 5 s plus 2 s so this would give me a plus plus 2 into plus 5 plus 2 into plus 5 and then you have over here s plus 9 divided by s plus 2 into s plus 5 and now for this you would use the partial expansion by partial fraction expansion so my y of s would come out to be like this a upon s plus b upon s plus 2 plus c upon s plus 5 plus d upon s plus 2 plus e upon s plus 5. So this is not a mathematics class that I should solve the partial fraction. So you should do it by your very own self. Anyways, the final answer that we would get, I would tell you, I would tell you, you know, based, I would not tell you the final answer, but based on these values. So, so you could say that my y of t would be of the form, what form? My y of t would be of this form, you know, a plus, then you have a b plus d, and have a look, the roots, uh, this would be an exponential of negative 2t, right, and u of t, so I'm taking common, and then you have a c plus e, and this would be an exponential of negative 5t, and overall you have a u of t as common. So you write, you find the values of this, you put, plug it into this, this is your final answer. Again, this one A, A is your steady state response, and the rest, this is your transient response. And the transient response, what, dies out. It dies out when, when t approaches infinity, and this stays, this stays when t approaches infinity. So that is it. I finish this video over here, I take a short break, I drink some water, I, I you know, wash my face, get a little fresh, and come back for the next video. So I'm going to record the next video also today. So anyway, see you in the next video very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.